Hello, so I'm going to do a little video sort of review and demonstration of the Atom Tag Bluetooth Geiger counter. So it's literally just this, as you can see it's pretty small. It charges up strangely using a 3.5mm jack, but that works. Um, and it just connects to your phone via Bluetooth. So you can see it there. Obviously the radiation levels are higher than normal because I've got some check sources near it which we're going to use in a moment. So it uses an SBM20 series Geiger Mulder tube which was basically the Soviet and Russian mass produced um, Geiger Mulder tube. And they're actually very capable Geiger Mulder tubes. You know, um, out of all the Cold War ones, they were very good for sort of background radiation levels to probably about 500 millirontgen per hour, depending on which device you use them, they had different ranges. Um, and so far with this I'm very impressed, it seems to perform the same sort of way as lots of other Geiger counters, you know, in, of a similar style. Um, but it will run into the problem I found with Strontium-90 jamming it, um, potentially, like a lot of other Geiger counters. And I'll demonstrate with the GQ GMC500 in a minute, it will do the exact same thing with the same sources. So basically, What's cool about this is you've got a very little portable Geiger counter, as you can see, about the size of a finger, because it's literally just an SBM20 tube with a bit of housing around it. And you've got your little carry pouch for it. And it connects to your phone via Bluetooth. You can display it either in micro rongguns or in micro sieverts. So I've got it in micro sieverts at the moment, because uh, they're a slightly bigger number. Because the problem is you basically have an extra digit on the um, micro rongun number. Um, so what we're going to do now is basically get a couple of check sources and just display how it works. So, what I'm going to just try and do is put this here so you can hopefully see that on the phone. Let's put the phone to the left side of the screen, that there. Right, they're both visible, still in frame. So this has a few sort of nice things on it. You can see the history of what's been on there and everything. There's sort of a log. There's a map setting, but nobody in my area has got one of these, so that's a bit pointless, but you can. The map setting would be quite functional. Um, and I said you can change all the configuration displays. Battery life on this seems very good. When I first got it, I hadn't given it a full charge. So um, the battery did conk out, but since then I've had literally no issues with it, you know, lasting for absolute ages. Um, but obviously with all Geiger counter type things, the more radiation you expose it to, the faster the batteries drain because of what ionising radiation does. Okay, so let's put a radium painted British World War II compass next to it to begin with. And then you should see the numbers start going up. Yep, there you go. So as you can see, it's responding to that. Um, what we'll do is just turn on actually the um, GQ GMC, and we'll see if it gives a similar sort of reading. All right, let me change this into the micro sievert mode. There we go. And if I put that about there. That's going up as well. Both are going up. I'll push that away from where I'm going to be measuring it. If anything, I'd say it's actually a bit more sensitive than this one, depending obviously where it's placed, because some bits of it will be hot and other bits based on where the radium paint is. But yeah, I've got this in the um, slow mode, so let me put it onto um, the faster display mode, uh, just because fast estimate timer is better when you have it lower, just for quickly um, checking the sample. And people are now sending me messages while I'm trying to do a video. That's helpful. Um, because obviously that's on Bluetooth. I can't just turn my phone onto airplane mode. So fast estimate timer. We'll put that down to five seconds. There we go. Now we'll put that there. And will it go close to five to six micro sieverts? Oh, it's above four for the most part. So, um... Yeah, it's getting similar sort of readings. So basically, you know, that's just that. If I put it on top of it like that, it might get a bit of a higher reading. Yeah, there we go. That's getting a much higher reading now, actually, because obviously it's um, sitting right on top of where the radium painted mirror is on the inside. So that's saying, what, 23 microsieverts? Let's see what this one says if I put that in the same spot. Twenty-two, twenty-three. 22, yeah, it's a very similar reading. Right, let's now look at another sample. We'll get the scariest sample I've got out in its sealed plastic case. The DP63's um, radium screen. As you can see, it's an absolutely horrifying thing. 
a lot of you will be aware of uh, what this is if you've watched previous videos. Okay, so I've got it sealed in a plastic box, but let's see what happens if I do this on it. Oh, look at that, 237, 244, 250. It's got quite a good fast estimate timer on this, actually. Um, but yeah, this is just one of those sort of crazy Soviet radium back panels where, you know, paint more radium on it. So that's saying, what, two, 250 odd microsievert? Let's see what this says. This might jam this one out, that, if you say, isn't it? Is it 80, 100? Come on, face the right way. Um, so I think this is actually more sensitive than that one. But the, the bit I ran into the problem with, I'll show you, it was with Strontium-90 samples, and this one has the exact same issue. So just to demonstrate it, let's get out some SR-90 samples. So we've got a Polish bit of Strontium-90, a Soviet bit of Strontium-90, and a Chinese bit of Strontium-90. So we'll put them all there facing upwards. Now if I put this over there like that, I think this will jam out. Right, still going up at the moment. Yeah, there we go, it's gone to zero. The reason it's gone to zero is basically the beta flux is just jamming the tube out. It's pretty common with Geiger counters. But just to prove it happens with this one as well. See? So it's, it's not a fault with this as such. It's just basically Geiger Muller tubes generally get saturated by beta sources pretty easily. So exactly the same thing happens here. If I use the weaker samples though, uh, let's say just this Polish one, which is stronger than the Soviet one, but it's um, still you know weaker than the Chinese and British sample I've got in there. That will probably, let's see, will go to maybe 400, 500 microsievert. Might actually be deciding it's a bit less than that, but might depend also where it is positioned on the tube. Yeah, there we go. See, that seems to be a more sensitive spot there. Well, interesting, it massively just jumped down there. Hmm, interesting. It probably depends how the electronics are assembled, but just to show you, if you do the same thing on this one... Go on, flick, flick around the right way. Maybe 158. So, yeah. It's a similar sort of thing with both counters. So, as I said, the, um... That's pretty good. If I if I disable silent mode, it will basically do a radiation type alarm thing with the phone, sending out notifications to tell me I'm being irradiated. See, which is pretty cool. Yeah, and it's vibrating as well. So if you didn't have it on silent mode, you'd definitely be aware that you were in a nasty radioactive field. Right, so anyway, that's just a short video on the Atom Tag. I'll probably do a longer one a bit later, but yeah, I do like this. It's quite a simple little Bluetooth device, and as I said, if you had it inside it, you know, we'll turn silent mode back on. If you had it inside there, it would be just quite a nice little neat um, sort of pocket decimeter. Because as you can see, it would be telling you that you're getting irradiated. Um, but, you know, it's an absolutely tiny thing. Comparing it to the size of this, for example, look at the size difference. You know, it's um, obviously yeah, it uses your mobile phone as well. But it's like a third of the side size of like the GMC 500, and it's got a nicer display in theory because it's using your phone. Um, so yeah, the Atom Tag I do really like it. Uh, thanks to Kraken for sending it me to sort of do a video on. Um, yeah, I definitely recommend them. Um, but as said, it does seem to have the same issue with beta radiation maxing it out like most other Geiger counters have. And as I said, I think that's just more a flaw of Geiger Muller tube design than anything else. But in terms of um, how strong uh, the fields are and that, you know, it's probably equal to something like the GQ GMC. Um, Price-wise though, I don't know if it would be a bit more or not, but yeah, it's, it's, it's a nice little device really for what it is. You know, I do think stuff like this would be a lot more practical for most people uh, when it comes to radiation rather than, you know, these sort of things, especially compared to the bigger old clunky Geiger Muller counter units. So, there you go. The you know, this works absolutely fine. I said if I put the radium back here again, it will start going up. Um, there we go, because obviously, yeah, it's where it's being irradiated. So I said, this is a very nice little device for what it is. Um, you know, I, I can see it being quite practical for some people. Um, but as you probably know, I'm generally more of a fan of like the bigger, more clunky Geiger counters. But for most people, I know that wouldn't be the case whatsoever. So yeah. 
I definitely recommend the Atom Tag. I've not had any like glaring faults of it. Any issues I've had of it seem to be issues you'd get with every single other Geiger counter. So there you go. Yeah, I'd recommend the Atom Tag, I think, in all honesty.